Welcome to sermons from St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Minot, North Dakota. St. Paul's is anchored in the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and for the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. The epistle is from Romans chapter 15. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of all endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people extol him. And again Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've lost track of what we are supposed to be worked up over right now in society. Kind of lost track. Don't you find it hard to keep up with what we should be confused about, what we should be distressed about in the world right now? What am I talking about, though? Well, it sure seems like the world always has a crisis. There's always a crisis in the world. That is to say, there's always some sort of, there is always some sort of big event, some big injustice, some big emergency that the world is tied up in knots over. Indeed, that the world is tied up in knots over. For example, back in 2016, we heard all about the great need of love to conquer hate. Then shortly after that concern, everything shifted to Medicare for all, for all Americans. Then somewhere in the middle of things, assault weapons were out of control, and then sexual harassment was out of control as well with the Me Too movement. Then who can forget COVID-19? with the crisis of masks save lives, stay home, stay safe, and the pandemic of the unvaccinated. And then there was Black Lives Matters mixed in all of that, as well as the crisis of drag queens reading books at libraries. More recently, there has been an uproar over abortions, inflation, supply chain complications, the war in Ukraine, Climate change, food shortages, overpopulation, underpopulation. They can go on and on and on and on. Crisis after crisis after crisis. To this point, the world seems to bounce from one crisis to the next. There always seems to be a distress. There always seems to be confusion in the world. There's always an uproar. It seems like hell is always breaking loose causing people to jump from one world panic to the next. Now, please know that I am certainly not downplaying the world's problems, for there are indeed many problems in this world. Contrary to what many fairy tales that people tell themselves to feel safe, this world, let's be brutally honest, this world has always been in distress. This world has always been in confusion. It has always been in a crisis. That is for sure. So then what's the point, though, Pastor? What's the point, then? The point is this, that you are Christians. Each and every single one of you, you are a Christian. And as a Christian, you as a Christian are not carried along by the waves and the winds of every changing crisis in this world. You're not bouncing back and forth, left and right, up and down, on the waves and the winds of crisis in the world. Well, dear friends, consider, consider this morning what the Apostle Paul says about all of this in a reading from the Epistle of Romans. 
Paul tells the Christians in Rome, and he also tells to you and me as well, that the Lord himself, he wants his holy word to characterize you and me, to characterize us Christians with a dependable, steady, and constant disposition that leans forward with hope. Hear that again. Paul tells the Christians in Rome, as well as you and me, that the Lord wants his holy word, his holy writ, his holy scriptures, to characterize you and me with a dependable, steady, and constant disposition that leans forward towards hope. In other words, the Lord has given his church the holy scriptures, the holy writ, so that you and I may be taught and encouraged by the holy word of God and not... Ah, not carried along by the waves and winds of every changing crisis and ideology of the world. You see, when God's holy word has its way with you and me, we're not only given firm encouragement, but we're given, get this, harmony amongst each other. That is to say, when the word of God, when the word of God shapes and forms you and me, we are given the same attitude of the mind towards one another. We're united with one foundation. One mind, one purpose. And with this oneness, well, we have one voice, like a perfectly harmonized choir that glorifies God together. However, though, as you already know, yes, as you already know, churches are often not in harmony. Churches often do not have the same attitude of the mind, and they often do not speak with the same voice, with one voice itself. And the reason why? Well, more often than not, they are not being shaped and instructed by the Word of God, but they are being shaped and formed and instructed by something else, namely, the emergencies of the world. Now, dear friends, keep in mind, with every crisis, every crisis of the world, whether it is a legitimate crisis or a manufactured crisis, there will always be people trying to solve that crisis. Some will be trying to solve the crisis with legitimate reasons, whereas others will never let the crisis, where others will never let a crisis go to waste. They will use the crisis itself to do things that they would otherwise, to do things that they otherwise could not do before. But regardless of their intentions, though, you and I must realize, we must realize that the church is located in this world, which means that it is always surrounded by the distress the confusion, the uproars of the world. Furthermore, since the church is located in the world, the church is also surrounded by the nifty solutions and the agendas and the education of the world to try to solve the so-called struggles of the world. And as we already know, many solutions that are promoted, some work, and also others do not work. But that is precisely where the crux of the problem exists for you and me, for the church, for the church itself. You see, way too often, the church takes its eyes, how we take our eyes off of Christ and his word, becoming insecure with the world's problems. And then the church begins to listen to the world's experts instead of listening to God's holy word. And when that happens, well, the church is no longer trusting solely in God's word. And when it is no longer trusting in God's word, it is no longer in harmony. And when it's no longer in harmony, I cannot speak with one voice. Unity is lost. The voice of the church is fragmented. It's ineffective. And the people do not live in steadfast assurance, but often race around like chickens with their heads cut off. Church members will look often like the world, changing their social media profile pictures from one crisis icon to the next icon, back and forth with the waves of life. Indeed, they will bounce back and forth on the waves of the world's problems, in distress and confused in an uproar about how the church should act and what the church should do, whatever crisis is currently at hand, how to function in a world that's gone mad. To make things worse, to make things worse, pastors can forget God's holy word as well with whatever crisis the world is going through. And instead, pastors can end up peddling from the pulpit the talking points of whatever political action group has grabbed the pastor's attention. In the end, this kind of preaching only fragments the church even more, even more as the flock needs to actually hear the word of God, but instead gets cultural talking points. God have mercy. 
God have mercy on churches that look like the world's news channels. Perhaps this is why faithful churches are often considered irrelevant in our culture and our world. You know what I'm talking about. You've heard it said before. We've all heard it said before. You know, I don't like going to church because it is irrelevant. It does not speak to the issues of the day. Now, perhaps there might be some truth to the criticism. However, if we were to examine the criticism a little bit more closely, we might realize that the many faithful churches, that many faithful churches are churches that won't take the bait of culture. They're churches that refuse to get on the bandwagon of the crisis of the month. They are churches that have remained steadfast. They are churches that have not turned their back on God's word to chase the world's drama, but have kept their minds set on the word of God through the hard times and the good times as well. Frankly stated, a church that won't follow the misguided, blathering ideas of so-called solutions of the world is not irrelevant, but steady. And so, baptized saints of St. Paul's, question for us, how are we doing at listening to the Word of God? Are we easily caught up in the drama and the ever-changing emergencies of the world? Do we wish that St. Paul's would take some tips from a relevant world? Are we a bit fearful of surrounding ourselves and sounding different from the world's solutions? Are we tempted to try and perhaps maybe impress the world and sounding like the world? Are we a bit frustrated when the church does not get worked up in a tizzy like our neighbors do? If we are, if we are, let me make this very simple for you and me. If we're worried about all these things, let's just pack up Let's just close our hymnals right now, grab our coats, grab our stuff, and let's exit that door. Let's stop wasting each other's time. Let's just go home. You see, the last thing the Lord needs or wants is another lukewarm church, a useless church that blows like a reed in the wind of the world. Mark this, the Lord will actually vomit up a stale and stagnant church. Lord have mercy. The fact of the matter is this, we all need to repent. Repent and remember that the Lord has not withdrawn his word from you and me. You see, his word has been present in this church for decades, and Lord willing, his word will continue for decades to come in this church. Which means that every time that there is a crisis in the world, you and I do not need to put our heads in the sand out of fear, and we don't need to freak out. Indeed, we do not need to freak out, but instead, yeah, instead, you and I can stand with our heads held high, looking not at the crisis with fear, but to Christ and his word. That is right, when the world panics, when every new crisis is like a punch to the gut, and when the world powers shake in their boots from the next crisis that comes, you, dear baptized saints, know that the Lord, know that the Lord is giving you his holy word. It's a word of truth and certainty so that, so that you can rest when there is no rest in the world, so that you can sing peace when there's no peace in the world, so you can have hope amid despair and encouragement when there is pain. Yes, indeed, when the world is jumbled with all sorts of different problems, different solutions, and different emotions, you have been given God's holy word and the surety of your baptisms that you are in the ark of the Holy Christian Church to be filled with joy, to be filled with peace, is filled with a hope so that you may overflow to those around you. And so, baptized saints, when all hell breaks loose, we stand up, we lift up our chins, we do not waver, we do not get pulled into despair, we trust in Christ who loved you and gave himself up for you to claim you as his own. Hear his word, receive his sacrament, and know that he will neither leave you nor forsake you in this life. Raise your chins. He is coming for you in a little while to make all things new. He has not withdrawn his word from you. His word is for you, to encourage you, to sustain you, to keep you, so that you may abide with him and him with you. To the glory of God, with one voice, one harmony, one church, his church today and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thy 
Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormatrichard.org or visit St. Paul's website at www.stpaulsminot.org. The Lord bless and keep you.